Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the president, Bola Tinubu, has advised Nigerians to choose between uh, purchasing petrol at 1,000 naira per litre or compressed natural gas, CNG, for 200 naira per litre as part of the government's efforts to promote CNG as a more affordable and environmentally friendly fuel option. During a recent meeting with the National Association of Road Transport Owners, Tinubu emphasized that this shift could significantly alleviate transportation costs and benefit the economy. He also acknowledged the challenges posed by the ongoing subsidy removal on petrol, urging citizens to adapt to the changes while the government implements measures to stabilize fuel prices. Our guest this morning is Mr. Bolahan Olojede, Public Affairs Analyst. Good morning and welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, we've been given no option, like it, uh, that's what the statement of the president seemed to be, no option. You either take this or you take that. Uh, okay, maybe that's an option. Um, this is not like be between the, the devil and the deep blue sea. It's option A is death, <laughs> option B is life. That's what the president is making this statement look like. Either choose between um, uh, fuel or petrol at 1,000 naira per litre or you buy a CNG at 200 naira per, is it kilogram or per meter or whatever they call it. So w let's start by extraying the president's statement. How does it sit with you uh, before we go other, into other matters? Well, I, I don't think the perspective should have been about um, you either take this or you, or you do the other one. Um, I think it is. It should be more of trying to migrate the minds of the people from what they have been used to maybe for 100 years. I don't know when the first car uh, appeared in Nigeria. Uh, so if, if the people have been used to a way of life for 70 years or 100 years or 50 years, if you need to migrate them to another way of life, uh, then the approach she will have to have to be different. It is not just throwing it out there and saying, oh, you either take this or you take that. If you ask them to just take this or take that, of course, um, people who would like to sit, sit with the familiar and try to compel you to make the familiar suit them in terms of what they currently don't like about it, which is the price. So um, I, I, I don't think that approach works. The approach that works is to also migrate their minds away from that thing they have been used to for 50 years or more. And that cannot be done uh, via a, a, a subtle, um, interesting two options that, that are put on the table. You have to give the details of why they should look at this alternative, what they stand to benefit from this alternative, what are the pros and cons of this alternative, and then migrate their mind. That is where, where we can get uh, the right level of support uh, for the embracement of sin. Mm. But it now seems like no no intention by government to make sure that the price of petrol comes down. Does that not make you feel that way? I, I don't. I don't see a, a a backward journey on the on the price issues around PMS um, as a person. I, I don't foresee a situation in which. Uh, um, the price of PMS will start to dance backward. Um, so it may appear that CNG is a genuine option, uh, but how to approach the option, make it available, drive awareness around it, provide the necessary infrastructure, provide the necessary comfort to make it a true alternative is what I think uh, is important for government to, to, to do. <coughs> What about our refineries? Are we giving up on them? Because uh, there's hope that if our refineries are working, there will be competition. And then the statement that the market should determine uh, what uh, the price of petrol is can really come to play. But it doesn't seem as if there will be any kind of competition with the Dangote refinery. And it means that whatever he decides is what is going to stand. In fact, we know that at some point there was a court case which um, uh, we thought because I don't know the details of that, but uh, the news out there was that uh, he went to court to make sure that the people who were given licenses to import petrol uh, are, are not given those licenses or the licenses should be taken back. Maybe that's just a conspiracy, maybe it's not the truth, but that is the news that um, we're 
that was out there for a lot of people to hear. So are we giving up on our refineries? Because if they work, there should be some semblance of a backward turn of the price of petrol. That, that is not going to drive a backward turn of the price of petrol. I think there has been a subtle deceit over the years about how uh, domestic refining dramatically changed the pricing regime um, of, uh, or, 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 the, or the cost of, of uh, PMS in the country. It, it's, um, it, it's, it's a flawed argument because the savings we are going to make from uh, refining domestically vis-a-vis -vis importing the product is not all that significant. What we're going to cut away will be the cost of logistics. The number one item that goes into that refining is crude. And even that crude price is given to us. We don't determine what the crude price is. It's, an, it's a commodity that is internationally priced. So if crude is the, is the key issue that will determine uh, at the cost of the product, how then did you expect that the fact that we are manufacturing domestically will now significantly cut down the, 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 the price of the product. It will not. What you will say are the sh things like shipping costs um, and, and some of the port-related uh, 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 charges that you pay, maybe the LC financing. By the time you put all those other costs together, you might not even arrive at up to 10% of, of, of the entire cost of the, of the product. So if the thinking had been that uh, the Dangote refining will, will bring a significant cut in the domain in, in the price of PMS, that was a flawed belief um, that either some people propagated or, or, or maybe it was government that put it in the in the space. Uh, I don't know, but it's not it's not rooted in the fact of the mathematics of uh, PMS production. Okay, what about the improvement in dollar to naira? Uh, will that have a significant effect on uh, on how much fuel is sold? When it when it is imported, if if a, if a product is imported and and naira improves, then that is that is fine. We definitely will see that effect because apart from the cost of food. One of the other major issues that we have with PFS is the fact that we are we were importing, we're still importing anyway, we're still importing significant um, and and it, it is said that it constitutes a chunk of the demand for foreign exchange for us. So if we stop importing, uh, it, it, what I'm going to say is probably, probably trying to reverse the order of what you said. If we, if we start producing domestically, then that chunk of dollar demand for importing refined products will be removed out of the way. The implication is that we will save that amount and, and, and it will reduce the pressure on the exchange rate. Number two is that when we start to refine domestically and we are able to put all this refining capacity on the table, we will produce much more than we can consume, and we can export and also earn foreign exchange. But as it is today, these benefits are not yet on the table because we're still doing a lot of importation of this product as we speak today. When we get to that junction where you have the government refineries working, where, where you have an improved capacity with uh, Aradel, with Walter Smith, with other private initiatives, then we can begin to talk of those benefits around uh, you know, being able to export and being able to reduce the volume of dollar demand that were being used for the importation of this product. Competition, like you mentioned at some point, is very important. Competition, that I, I remember living in other parts of the world, and I used to take a drive uh, to about uh, three or four streets uh, away. I mean, this is this is more than five kilometers just to go and buy the fuel, because the fuel uh, five kilometers away was way cheaper than the ones that were closest to me. Uh, so you will have elements of that, and I think elements of that are even already in the market. Fuel sells for as low as nine hundred and something now to probably in some places one thousand and seventy, one thousand and eight. 
So those elements of price differentials are already there, uh, if, if that is what we're looking at. But as to the significant drop in the price of PMS, unless there is a significant drop also in the price of crude in the international market, I do not foresee that there will be a significant drop in the price of PMS in the country. And putting an alternative in the space is also a form of competition. What it means is that rather than 10 people looking for PMS to buy, maybe it is only six people that will be looking for PMS. The other four are now, looking, are now uh, uh, using CNG. It is a form of competition that will also help to moderate the price, uh, uh, the price pressure, which is occasioned by the uh, uh, supply and demand uh, uh, situation in the market. So I, I, I really don't know. Now that the president is putting these uh, alternatives uh, here as a form of competition, like you said, uh, do you think it is ripe enough for that kind of, uh, uh, of alternative to be given to the people? Because see, uh, CNG, to even convert your car to CNG compliant car, it will cost you not less than 500,000 Naira. And facilities are not everywhere. And then when you convert this car, if you're traveling, for instance, to the east, how many of the CNG um, uh, gas stations are you going to encounter? The only one I know, there may be more, the only one I know is uh, between um, Bega uh, in Lagos and then uh, Mowi in uh, Ogun State. So I don't even know how many of these stations that you are going to take advantage of if you are traveling to the east or to the north and all that. And then the president is already saying this without even having the facilities on ground. Okay, I'm, I'm sure there are more facilities anyway, but it is now that you are bringing the discussion to the right arena. I have looked at the mathematics of CNG vis-a-vis -vis PMS. And assuming uh, what the economists will say, ceteris paribus, all the things being equal. In fact, it's as if all of us should go on to CNG. Mm. The, the cost savings is amazing. It is amazing. So, um, but my fears and uh, what you have you are, you are brought to the table, number one is if adoption should increase today, let's say maybe as of today we have 1% adoption. I don't have the right numbers. I'm just using arbitrary numbers. Yeah. Let's say we have 1% adoption today. If that 1% should go to 10%, do we have enough conversion centers to handle that? Mm. Number one. Will the CNG, the availability of CNG, be able to cope for a tenfold increase in adoption? Will the dispensing infrastructure, that the one you mentioned about one between Moe and uh, Bega, Will it be enough? We are used to being able to get to the nearest filling station and buy for mm -hmm. Are we also going to be able to drive into the nearest CNG and, 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 and refill? Those are critical issues. Will the gas be there? Will the infrastructure for dispensing CNG be there if adoption should, should become tenfold today? And those are the real discussions. As far as the mathematics of cutting over to CNG is concerned, the mathematics add up. Adds up. I have, in fact, yesterday I was I was trying to do it with a Siena. A Siena will probably go through about a million. If, if you use, for someone who uses, um, uh, say, one full tank every week, it means that in a month, it will have guzzled about one million around. No, about, about 320 on well. Mm. And by the time you look at an entire quarter, it is getting to about 1 million naira on fuel. So instead of spending 1 million naira on fuel, what CNG is saying is that that 1 million could have been 250,000 naira as well. Mm. So the decision, as far as the mathematics is concerned, remove the emotion. The mathematics of using CNG adds up perfectly, and that is the place to be. But there are other challenges that the government must speak to the issue of financing, availability of gas, and the rollout of the infrastructure for people to be able to access CNG or, or to even access the conversion in the first instance. Mm. 
Well, because it gives me worry. Um, okay, if people rush now to go and convert, like you have said, they go and convert, where, where will you even find the centers to convert? Uh, how, where will you even get the money to convert? And then uh, will you have these things available? Because, like I said, I, lo I know only one, one uh, gas station, the CNG gas station, somewhere uh, between Bega and Mowi. And they say there are others, maybe in Lagos here, a few of them and all that. But how can we access these people? these places it's a very very big problem and now we're talking about whether it's just as if whether we like it or not can't we also think of other alternatives as well because we've seen that gas and petrol uh, might be a problem but what about solar what about electric uh, vehicles and all that. I remember in the previous administration somebody in the National Assembly was so passionate about the fact that we as a nation produce uh, fuel, produce crude oil and then someone was trying to talk about electric cars and he ro ro rose up and said for a country that produces crude nobody should even be talking about electric cars because it's like talking about removing our source of income from our mouths and my mouth was a gap. I, did, I didn't even know what to say again. So if people in the National Assembly will have that kind of thinking, then are we, go, are we likely to have more alternatives than just uh, what has been thrown to us and which we do not even have access to? You see, it is interesting how um, the, the general opinions are, are swirling towards electric vehicles. You don't even have electricity in your house. People are talking of electric vehicles. Is it just a fascination with the idea of electric vehicle, or we think that, or we actually believe that that is where we ought to be? Even in the developed world, what is the percentage of vehicles on the streets of America today that are electric vehicles? So, for a country that has abundance of gas under its soil, one of its own primary consideration should be to monetize that gas, and a domestic consumption offers. And a, a great opportunity to, 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 to monetize the gas on, 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 under the ground that, that is sitting there. So, globally, also, especially from the developing part of the world, gas is being mooted as the energy of transition. So, as we're moving away from crude, gas is meant to be that interim thing that we move into. So, it, and the electric vehicle, I think people should also go and prize electric vehicles. The people, we're, we're, we're running away from something. Have we seen the prices of electric vehicles? So what we have in abundance here now is gas. And we make it for us. The same resistance that we have for having used PMS for 70, 80 years, and have been asked to come and use CNG. We also happen when we are migrating to electric vehicles. And the prices of those electric vehicles is another major issue that we need to think about. Shouldn't it be our Not choice? Shouldn't it be our choice to, to choose one or the other? Because it's if it is our choice, if it is expensive, there are people who would take it as a choice. Shouldn't it be put in our hands that, okay, if you can do this, do this. If you can do the other, do the other. Uh, rather than just telling us that you must do one or the other. That doesn't give us most of a choice. There are solar-powered vehicles. There are electric-powered vehicles. There are uh, PMS-powered vehicles. There are gas-powered vehicles and all that. There are alternatives. No matter what the percentage is, it should be the choice of the people uh, to use one or the other. That's what I'm thinking. I'm also sure there are electric vehicles in Nigeria. I'm sure there might be a few of them in Nigeria. The question... We have not solved. We are, we, are, we are taking the important thing out of the discussion and hanging on to the emotion. The same infrastructure issue that you spoke about, what's we'll stop it there? We have to deal with it. Where are the infrastructure for this electric vehicle? The same way we are asking today, where are the infrastructure for the oh, CNG vehicles that we are talking about? What we have invested in over several years have been this PMS. That is what we know. That is what we are used to. So even migrating us from that place to gas is a major issue. How much more migrating us onto electric? I'm not saying electric, we should look at electric, we should also you know, put it there, like you said, as an option. But the option that serves this country the better now is if we can put the right framework together for CNG to work and then migrate a portion of the PMS people onto the CNG platform. We have a lot of gas 
and it is easier for us to move on to gas than to jump the gas and start you know migrating onto electric vehicles. Like I said, how many solar vehicles are on the street of the UK as we are speaking today? By way of emphasis, let's just go back uh, as we wrap up uh, this segment. Um, things that the federal government should do, um, not just what they should have done, but let's just assume that they didn't know what they should do now to make sure that this statement becomes a statement that people will embrace. Like, okay, you have a better alternative in gas. Why not use that instead of going for a 1,000 naira um, per liter alternative of petrol? What are those things that need to be put in place to make sure it works for the Nigerian populace? Number one is awareness. When you are changing the mindset of people from what they have been used to for decades, you have to make a case for them to change their mind into adopting something new. That's because if you don't do that, you will face, number one, a natural resistance that is human. Number two is that you could leave that space for alternative information. There was a case of a... Uh, um, a, you know, a vehicle that exploded uh, and it dominated the internet and, and, and the media for, for, for many days. Now, you could allow those kind of narrative to drive the this, this sensibilities and the, and, the, and the thinking of the people. If you allow that, then the war is lost right from the beginning. Mm. So, champion the awareness, the knowledge, the education that needs to be there to make people even want to consider CNG. Number two is, the, is to drive the availability of infrastructure and gas. Government has its role to play. It should also recruit the private sector to join in the rollout for infrastructure as well as availability of uh, 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 gas in that space, as well as even the conversion center. There has to be more conversion center. Like I said, if, the, if, if adoption becomes 10 times today, will the existing conversion centers be able to cope? Issues around regulation. When this thing, if adoption picks up, one other thing you are going to have to deal with is quackery. What we saw uh, in the exploded vehicle were issues of quackery. And that is when adoption is still so low. When it becomes higher, what will happen? Will somebody go to China and import kits that are something that is supposed to be 3 millimeter has been made to be 2.5 millimeters so that you can have additional gain? And then we have problems on our hands. So these are all the multiple issues apart from financing. Financing, government can put some financing on the table. It can also co-opt the private sector to come into that. But I'm aware that some private sector people are already uh, developing financing products for, for, for conversion. So these are the ways to make this thing work. A mere pronouncement does not solve the problem. Okay, well, thank you so much for re-emphasizing those things. I know that you had uh, spoken about them earlier on, but we needed to just uh, put that out there again. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Olojide, for coming on the show and helping us make sense of this and proffer solutions to the problem we are facing right now. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. We were talking with Mr. Bolahon Olojide, a public affairs analyst. We were looking at the statement of the president that you either take um, petrol at 1,000 naira per liter or CNG at 200 naira. Okay, we were explaining the statement and also looking at the possibility of uh, using gas as an alternative. Why and how Nigerians can embrace it better. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at IMF saying that global debt is escalating and it's time to put a lead. Stay with us.